dear acharya ji i clearly see that the society is violent and the mind is violent i lived through a horrid civil war in lebanon in the 70s where killing and ethnic massacres were common now i am living in canada and when i do a retrospection on the past with my new understanding i still cannot come to terms with the fact that my well-being and happiness do not depend on circumstances or others obviously if this happiness again today even with my new understanding will still be affected and will still be at the mercy of atrocious events of similar intensity then where am i acharya ji please help me understand and be clear with being in the world but not from the world uh, this phrase has been quoted by him so quote being in the world but not from the world unquote how can i be like that even in the middle of terrible events thank you for your grace dori february from montreal dori go to the fact of the ethnic massacres that you might have seen why were they happening who were the participants what drove them what were their reasons and motivation hmm. if a million people were participating in the civil war hmm, did all the million get mad at once no a few people get mad and the others they just get affected by the madness right and then what you have at your hands is a civil war right you are asking me how not to be in the middle of a civil war and remain affected you are asking how is it possible that one can be in the middle of very bloody circumstances and yet remains untouched i am asking what is it that happens when one does get involved or influenced or impressed what happens a civil war happens when you see that the very reason why things like ethnic massacres or ethnic cleansing happen is because the deeds of a few are able to affect the minds of others then you very clearly realize that the peace of mind is so very important that it cannot be left to the mercy of situations nobody wants to take the blame upon himself dori nobody would say i am the original sin people say oh we just got influenced have you ever come across someone who even in his deepest moment of realization or repentance says i am the original sin does anybody say that what do people say oh it was such a chaos and such an explosion and such a flow i got overwhelmed what do i do i just reacted you know reaction is the most common defense reaction is the most common alibi and i am saying all civil wars are just reactionary are they not hmm dori you were in the middle of that civil war what if somebody hit you and you too reacted the civil war would have only gained in its intensity 
in its expansion. How do more and more people keep falling to the deluge? How do more and more people keep swelling the crowd, keep adding to the numbers? They all just get influenced. Oh, we reacted. Something happened and it had an impact on me. I am an innocent being. But what do I do? When bad things happen in front of me, then I, you know, react. I tell you, that's the favorite apology of the evil. What is the favorite apology of evil? I just reacted. I am not originally bad. I just reacted. When bad examples are in front of me, then I copy them. When I see somebody angry, then I too get angry in retaliation. I am saying this is the Saturn's favorite apology. This apology is the mother of all civil wars. I didn't start it. Well, a fellow got to react. It was all in self-defense, you know. It was all in... Where would the buck stop, Dori? Or will it just keep getting passed on mechanically? Hmm? You ask me, what is the meaning of being in the world and yet not of the world? This is the meaning. You are not obliged to react. You have it in you to remain untouched. You cannot cite situations or provocations to justify your evil. Are you getting it? If you will look at the so-called criminals, all will have their reasons. Nobody is fundamentally bad. Badness lies only in copying badness. And when you react to something, you have copied it. I don't know whether Newton was spiritual or not, but he very well knew that reactions are equal to the action. Equal, you know. Meditate on the word equal. Reactions appear opposite to the action, right? But they are equal. What is self-realization? This is self-realization. To see that nothing can compel you to behave or think or live in a certain way. If you can be compelled, then you do not exist. Then there is just the flimsy ego. What is truth? That which is irrespective of the situations. What is truth? That which is unconditionally. Uh, such a beautiful
word. One has to say rather wistfully. Hmm. Unconditional. Is there anything unconditional about us? Anything that will not get affected by anything? Anything that will not change no matter what? We are plumes of smoke. Cannot be one thing even for a moment. Take the lid off and the vapor is rising from the kettle and the kid goes and his breath is enough to blow the steam, the vapor away. Such is our situation. Anything can impact us. There is no certitude, no integrity. Nothing about us is certain. We are so extremely committed to disloyalty. That's the only thing consistent about smoke. It will not remain one. It will flux into something else. It has to change. And the result is constant insecurity. Since you know that you have no integrity within you, since you know that anything impacts and changes you, so you cannot be sure of anybody then. If you have never seen any integrity within yourself, you will not believe that integrity exists at all. Therefore, you will keep doubting everybody. Since you know that you can never be loyal to the one thing, so it will be very difficult for you to believe that anybody can be loyal to the one thing or the one thing exists at all. You will constantly be suspicious. And that's a very bad way to live. Is it not? Sleepless nights. Constant churning. Hmm? What to do? We live in a world where we think that contentment and peace are to be had by constantly running about making the best use of opportunities and hopping on to the next green field. The East was much more wise. The wiser East taught dedication, loyalty, commitment. But a tragedy happened. The ego became committed to nonsense. 
instead of remaining committed to the truth the east applied commitment to tradition people became committed to following traditions become became committed to rituals yes the east still knows commitment but that commitment is misplaced however i say misplaced commitment is better than no commitment at least in east people know commitment they are committed to all the foul things obviously but at least they know what it means to be dedicated unconditionally much worse are those who live in constant doubt and therefore constant trauma they are always looking for greener pastures they are always looking for the next hot thing where can i make it big how do i exploit this resource and move on to the next you are just exploiting yourself if remaining untouched is too much for you dori then see what is the result of not remaining untouched if you had a small village of meditating saints in the middle of a district burning in civil war would that village to erupt i'm asking please we need many more such villages the saint loves peace so much that violence does not appeal to him for you to be affected by something that thing must hold a certain appeal a certain attraction the saint is already in love with peace you want to tempt him with violence and violence has a great thrill violence has a great attraction the ego feels inflated when it inflicts violence on someone the saint has no such fascination for thrill he is already home already good would civil wars happen then we are very inflammatory material hmm always ready to explode not only inflammable but actually seeking fire you must have so much love for something that nothing should be able to dislodge you from your love and if you don't have that intensity of love in your life why are you alive hmm If everything about you is negotiable credible open to compromise open to influence it's 
not life. When everything about you is being taken away, that is when you know the utmost joy of that which you cannot leave, that which will not be taken away. If you are a pleasure hunter, the greatest pleasure lies. in being madly, deeply, openly, secretly, in an unreasonable love. How will you now be carried away? You have already been carried away. They have come to influence you. You have already been taken away. How will you be influenced now? Are you getting it? If you do not know love, then that should be your profession. Keep everything else aside and learn love. Huh? Otherwise there is always a civil war, you know. The mind is where the civil war is raging. Hmm? And it is because here, inside, there is always a civil war. So the entire world appears like an enemy. <laughs> war is within. And the enemies are all appearing outside. Oh, he is so dangerous. She is so evil. And that is because you do not know love. Get hurt, get robbed, get beaten, get bruised. Get the worst kind of torture that you can imagine. But remain in love. Such love is called faith. Hmm? 